Is everyone in Connecticut a rich elitist snob? Did everyone here go to Yukon? And are there any good beaches in this whole state? We'll answer those questions and more. So grab your snobby bottle of rosé and try not to get shot. We're going to unbox the state of Connecticut. Man, what a really pretty scene we have here. This is Connecticut. It's fall, and as you can tell, the season's in bloom. There's nothing quite like fall in Connecticut, and then winter comes and this place is miserable until March. But Connecticut's a lot more than just autumn leaves. For such a small state, it's really diverse. Some parts are like New York City light, and some are Massachusetts-ish. It's kind of a combination of the Hamptons, Detroit, and Alabama. There's lots of rich people here. In fact, some of the wealthiest areas in the nation are in Connecticut. But its inner cities are miserable, and there's rednecks all over the rural parts. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves. For a more complete picture of Connecticut, we need to look at things from a higher level and then check out each county and region. This is Connecticut. It's not a very large place. It's actually the third smallest state in size. Even Hawaii is bigger than Connecticut is. You can drive across the whole state in a couple hours. But there's a lot going on down there. We'll begin down here in the southwest corner of the state. This is Fairfield County, a.k.a. New York Junior. This is where the money is, people. The country clubbing elite, the gated communities, more rich people per square mile than anywhere else in the country. This is where all the really super rich hedge fund managers live, the people who commute into New York City every day. Think snobs with boat shoes and sweaters around their shoulders. They golf, play tennis, and sail on the weekends. Their kids drive nicer cars to school than we do. Life is so good for the people in places like Stamford, Greenwich, New Canaan, Ridgefield, and Darien. And then just north of this elite section is Danbury, where the landscapers live who make those yards look so nice. However, right next door is Bridgeport, which is a straight ghetto. This might be the worst place in all of New England, actually. Crime, poverty, drugs. It looks third world on some blocks. Kind of sad, actually. The fact that Bridgeport is surrounded by wealthy, successful people highlights the actual income disparity in the state. After the state of New York, Connecticut has the highest gap between the rich and poor in the country. A little further north is an area that can be defined as poor rich people. This area of Fairfield County is less wealthy than the southern part. These are some fairly rich people who were also taxed at a higher bracket, but they aren't as wealthy as the people closer to New York City, so the taxes and the high cost of living are a much bigger burden. Places like Trumbull. Way up here in northwest Connecticut, near the New York-Massachusetts state line, is Litchfield County. The southern part of Litchfield County has some snobby people like those in Roxbury, but the further north you go, the more rural it gets. Green hills, horse farms, and small, quaint towns. The zoning out here allows for huge pieces of property, so rich New York people have their second homes out here where they can pretend to be country, or actually be country. Good for them. There's plenty of farms out here too, and lots of poor hippie types who are THC dependent. Litchfield County is losing people fast though. Young people don't care about nature and open space, so they leave, or they don't settle down here in the first place. They're even talking about consolidating the schools in rural parts of Connecticut like this because there aren't enough kids to justify all of them anymore. Another reason people are leaving here is the taxes on these super large estates. They're massive and they're going up all the time. Connecticut people already feel they overpay their share of taxes as it is, at least the ones who work, because right here is Waterbury. It's straight ghetto. There's no jobs here worth driving into. Torrington is also in this area. It's pretty poor and sketch. Think West Virginia. The allure of country living is making a comeback though in the COVID era. So maybe way out on the sticks, Connecticut is gonna make a little mini comeback. This is also Leaf Peeper Central. This part of the state is on the Eastern fringes of the Appalachian Mountains. As such, this is the prime place for Leap Peepers people. Folks come from all over the world and book hotels a year in advance. 
to try to time it when Connecticut's hillsides are on fire around mid-October. You have this area up here in northern Hartford County that's tobacco and bean fields and dairy farms and suburbs. Actually, for the most part, anything east of the Connecticut River is sort of rural. Some parts in northern Hartford and Tolan counties can be considered the deep south of the far north. And by the way, this little notch here, that's called a Southwick Jog. It's a two square mile plot of land that began as a surveying error and Massachusetts wanted to keep it for whatever reason. Anyways, the two states fought over it for a long time and then Connecticut just gave it away like an old pair of shoes. Did you know Connecticut was our fifth state? Huh, I see that Mappy. It looks like Connecticut became a state only about a month after the other states, so they were almost first. Hey, you're wearing a hat like me, Mappy. I look up to you a lot. You're my mentor. Aw, oh, Mappy. So sweet. Oh, God. A little bit lower in Hartford County is Hartford. It's one of the worst state capitals in our nation. Terrible crime and poverty, just like in Bridgeport and Waterbury. But Hartford is still a big player in the region because it's still sort of the insurance capital of the country world-ish. Lots of big companies exist here, though they're slowly moving away. Again, due to the high taxes, people. But if you live on the west side of the Connecticut River in West Hartford, you're much more successful. The west side of Hartford County is really nice, with more rich, snobby people in places like Simsbury. Many of them wish they were wealthy enough to live in Fairfield County. They are not. A little bit south of that is New Haven County, which has a mix of suburbs and working class towns. At the south end of this county is the city of New Haven proper. That's where Yale University is. That's a really prestigious place that you and I can't afford, nor can be accepted into. On campus, it's really pretty, but drive two miles from campus in any direction and New Haven gets dumpy fast. But overall, the schools are great here in this part of the state, as they are in the rest of the state. This state has a bunch of prep schools and boarding schools and private schools, too. Connecticut has one of the highest concentrations of elite secondary education in the country, people. Just east of New Haven County is Middlesex County, which has more preppy upper middle class families. This area is along the shoreline and then into eastern Hartford County, from Glastonbury all the way down to East Haven and along the shore. And let's talk about Connecticut beaches. They're okay. Rocky Neck passes is decent. So does Hammonesset. Ocean Beach in New London is a cool place with the traditional boardwalk and games and rides. But the Long Island Sound is sort of gross and smells weird because, well, it's got poop in it. And there aren't any real waves because they're blocked from the Atlantic Ocean by Long Island. So instead, a lot of nutmeggers go to Rhode Island each summer to see a real beach. Misquamakit's close to such beach. It's just across the state line in Rhode Island. This region down here along southeastern Connecticut is sort of like Rhode Island. This is New London County. New London proper is a waterfront town with a rich history. The cute waterside town of Mystic is here, where you can get Mystic Pizza. Remember the 80s movie? It was based on this place. They actually put clams on their pizza here, which is just gross. They build Navy submarines down here in Groton and in New London. Submarines are used for spying on and shooting at enemies. They are hard to detect because they're underwater. Also in this part of the state is Foxwoods Casino. ka -ching. It's pretty much the biggest casino in the whole world. No, not really, but it's big. They get some big acts here, like Kelly Clarkson and even WWE Smackdown. Uh-oh, big time down there. Northern New London County and Wyndham County are pretty rural. Many people in Connecticut say this part of the state might as well be Rhode Island. Places like Killingly and Plainfield are here, but there's not a lot going on. And there's hardly any Dunkin' Donuts to be found. Not a lot of culture out here. But then again, there's not a lot of culture in this whole state. Sorta. Kinda. There's a lot of smallish towns with drug issues in eastern Connecticut. And a ton of dead deer everywhere. Every day in Connecticut, 50 deer are hit and killed by a Connecticut driver. And in the fall, it's even worse. Dodging deer is just one reason Connecticut people think they're the best drivers in the country. Also, from a lifetime of avoiding New York drivers and mass hole drivers, too. There are some nice parts out in this part of the state. For instance, Jim Calhoun lives in the community of Pomfret. He's highly revered. But Gino Ariema, the women's coach, is like a god in Connecticut. Located over here in stores. Stores itself is sort of a smallish place that gets tripled in size when Yukon's in session. 
but everybody in Connecticut either went to UConn or will go to UConn or their parents went to UConn, and you thought you liked your team, everyone in Connecticut cares about UConn basketball. The men's team is good sometimes, but the women win the national title like every other year. Good for them. Politically, this state has been blue for a long time, pal. This was the first state for same-sex marriage. It's tough on guns, and Connecticut has huge handout cities like Hartford and Bridgeport to keep afloat. Despite that, most people in Connecticut are fiscally conservative. A lot of people here understand the value of money more than, well, maybe any other state. That's because there are so many financial industries here. It's like the whole state's a bunch of insurance salesmen, tax lawyers, and hedge fund managers. But they vote to tax the shit out of themselves, and then they complain about it. Nutmeggers feel they're smarter and richer than most Americans, and that they pay more than their fair share of taxes. They're kind of stuck-up a-holes, but they feel entitled to be that. People in Connecticut are typically opinionated and well-informed on national and state affairs. They're blunt and sarcastic, and not overly friendly. Connecticut's changing in a lot of ways, though. This is no longer the wealthiest state, composed of mostly white, high-earning achievers. It's still holding on to its rural charm for the most part, but companies are leaving because the taxes are too high. And as a whole, this state is bleeding fiscally, and Connecticut remains one of only a handful of states losing more people than are coming in. The suburban model just hasn't been popular over the last few decades, as Americans have chosen big cities, places like Boston and New York. But what's going to happen if police are defunded and big cities are dangerous and undesirable again? And COVID is also making people want not want to live in those big cities either. So maybe Connecticut will one day be kind of cool again. But for now, a lot of people are moving out of Connecticut and not a lot of people are moving in. So here's a map, again, one more time, of Connecticut. We looked at state stereotypes, which broke the state down into various regions. But for now, here's a more accurate map. And that is the state of Connecticut in a nutshell. Now we could have gone on and on. We didn't even have time to talk about how half the state are New York fans and half the state likes Massachusetts teams, nor did we have time to talk about how everybody in the whole state loves Dave Matthews or how everybody in this state is a small town gossiper. But we have to go. The Yukon women's team's about to start and I never ever swore that I would love women's basketball so much, but it's kind of grown on me. Connecticut, so many trees and leaves that fall down in the fall. Connecticut, so many schools where they all love women's basketball. They're rich, they're snobs, they're stuck up no more. They're taxed to the max and now they're poor. They're rich, they're snobs, they're stuck up no more. They're taxed to the max and now they are then poor. Then there's Bridgeport, it's so painful. Then there's Hartford, it's so painful. All the money goes to pay them. All my taxes kinda hate them. Yeah. So if you're watching this and you live in Connecticut, I hope you learned something about your own state. If you want to do something nice for somebody there, I put links in the description for places you can check out to get involved and help others in need in Connecticut. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.